For this video, we're going to work on a word problem involving a polynomial equation. Now, remember to solve a polynomial equation, usually we go through a process of factoring, finding the zeros, and then, of course, maybe testing those zeros, seeing which one actually works out. The word problem that I have cooked up for this video is as follows. A gas tank is to be built like the one below. So, you know, you often see many propane tanks uh, that, you know, have the similar shape. They have two half spheres on each end and a big cylinder piece in the middle. Uh, the only thing we know about this tank so far is that the cylinder piece is exactly 12 feet long. The question is, what radius should I make these little uh, spherical pieces on the end so that the volume of the entire tank will be exactly 144 pi cubic feet? All right. Let's see how we can uh, start thinking about the problem and where that polynomial equation will come into play. Since this is talking about the volume of the tank, I want to think about the volume of the cylindrical piece and the volume of both of those half spheres put together. The volume of just the cylinder piece, if I you know just looking at that, would be pi times the radius squared times the height. Now we do know the height, so I can say the volume of that uh, cylindrical piece would be pi r squared times 12, which I might just go ahead and write this as 12 pi r squared. For the sphere, when you put them both together, you have one whole sphere. So the volume for a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Awesome. So since we're building a tank out of both of these pieces, I want to look at the total volume. This will involve the cylindrical piece, 12 pi r squared, plus the 4 thirds pi r cubed. Awesome. Looks good. So according to the problem, I want to know where the total volume will be 144 pi. So 144 pi, when is it equal to the volume of the cylindrical piece plus the volume of both of my spheres? Here we are. So to solve this problem, I need to solve the following polynomial equation. And it looks like it's a cubic because I have an r cubed. Alright, so to solve this, uh, basically I want to get everything over to one side and set it equal to zero. Then I can start factoring it and finding the zeros of that polynomial. Everything right now has a pi in it, so let's make it a little bit easier on ourselves by dividing everything by pi. Alright, that's a little bit better. Now I'll go ahead and subtract the 144. And let's go ahead and write this in descending order. That way I have my r cubed first. So 4 thirds r cubed plus 12 r squared minus 144. All right, looks good. Let's see. Um, well, I'm not sure how this factors yet, and the numbers are quite big. So let's divide everything by 4. Again, to make them a little bit smaller, a little bit easier. Alright, a little bit better. And I don't want to deal with fractions. Let's go ahead and multiply everything through by 3. Awesome. There we go. So now I could use my factoring techniques in order to break down this polynomial and figure out what its zeros are. Now for this particular polynomial, I've already done it. Let's go ahead and jump to what the factors look like. So r minus 3 and r plus 6 squared. Now when looking at this in its factored form, uh, I know that it's equal to 0 when either this factor is equal to 0 or when this factor is equal to 0. So when r is equal to a 3 or when it's equal to a negative 6. Awesome. 
So it looks like I have two solutions for my problem. Now since this is in the context of a real world problem, I want to make sure that makes sense. And so when I'm looking at my radius, there's no way I could have a radius of negative 6. It just doesn't make sense. So we'll get rid of that. It is not a valid solution. However, having a radius of 3 looks like it will work out just fine, so we will keep this as our solution. So as you can see, uh, with word problems involving a polynomial equation, you simply go through the solving process of solving those polynomial equations, factor, find your zeros. For more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.